Nick's travelling around Madagascar using about every mode of transport he can find in search of the island's most villainous creatures. Villainous, Makayla? That's what you are, surely, for setting us all these impossible tasks, like waiting through shallow puddles. <laughs> My search for villains begins at sea, and I feel strangely confident. I know just where to find my first bad boy. There it is. This is the creature I hope to find. Well, there's loads of um, a very famous starfish. It's unmistakable. Uh, called a crowd of thorn starfish. They're big uh, blue or red or purple things. And they just look like baddies. And um, the reason I'm calling them our villain, because what they're doing is eating the coral. It's very obvious where they're sitting. You can see what they've eaten and what they haven't because what they've eaten has been bleached a ghostly white. And what they've done is basically removed all the little animals, little coral animals, out of their houses. The crown of thorns starfish is a global villain, munching its way through reefs from here to Australia. To find my next villain, we'd heard rumours that they always appear just before the sun goes down. Now, it may not look like I'm in the wild, but I am. I'm just happy to be at a campground where I'm waiting for one of my contenders for Madagascar's most villainous. It wasn't going to be easy, just me and a gecko for company. Until, that is, I had a strange feeling that we were being watched. It's a striped civet. Now, these animals have an exceptional sense of smell and are known to steal food from kitchens from right under the villagers' noses. It's actually given him a, a bit of a bad reputation among the Malagash people because this animal gets accused of raiding many a chicken coop. Like all good villains, he's also very nervous of getting caught by the camera. But I prefer to think of him as just an opportunist, always ready to grab a free meal. And that goes for his mate too. Now we've got two of them. I don't really think these guys are villainous enough. I'll take a mugshot anyway. Now, for a true villain of the animal world, you have to think small. Now, the animal I've got in mind has killed more human beings than any other creature on Earth. In fact, it's killed more than half of all people that have existed since the Stone Age. And what's more, it's a great one for a lazy naturalist, because all I've got to do is stand here and it'll come to me. It is, of course, the mosquito. Now, I can tell you this mosquito is a female, and that's an easy one, I can tell that, because only female mosquitoes feed on blood. They need a blood meal in order to nourish their eggs that are developed inside their bodies. Now, if I'm telling the truth, it's not actually the mosquito that's the killer. It's the various parasites and nasty diseases that they carry, including the big famous one, malaria. Now, while it seems the mosquito is the ultimate animal villain, we are possibly being a little unfair on the animals, because at the end of the day, all these adaptations are for their survival. They're only doing what they're pre-programmed to do. For the real villain in the animal world, you need to change your perspective. In fact, you're looking at it. Not the mosquito, but me. Humans have got to be the most villainous creatures on planet Earth. Now, ever since human beings arrived here in Madagascar over 2,000 years ago, it has spelt disaster for the environment in this country. Deforestation, logging, farming, all those practices are basically removed most. That's over 90% of Madagascar's native vegetation. And with that vegetation has gone many of its species. And it's not just Madagascar. This is a global problem. Now, just to sum it up, take the lemurs. They are found nowhere else on Earth, yet since man arrived here in Madagascar, over half of all known species have gone extinct. That, in my books, makes man the biggest villain of all. <laughs>